my identity as an artist and my identity as a social scientist are like deeply and fundamentally tied together. I want to think about why the world looks the way that it does, specifically in the context of inequality and social stratification. The vast disparities in, in the ways that we are treated. And you can look at housing discrimination, you can look at mass incarceration, you can look at food insecurity, you can look at so many different things uh, that continue to plague the black community specifically. Everything about what the world looks like in this sort of current socio-political moment makes sense. Like nothing is, is an accident. The reason the world looks the way that it does is because people have made decisions so that certain people are afforded certain opportunities and certain resources and certain people aren't. You know, for me, growing up in a home in which I felt loved, affirmed, and celebrated, and then going out into a world in which you are sort of rendered a caricature of fear, in which you are followed in stores, in which you are stopped and frisked, in which you are uh, pulled over by the police, in which you are sort of made a sort of stereotype of yourself. I taught high school English uh, for three years in Prince George's County, Maryland. My students had four core principles uh, in the sort of contract that they had to sign. And it was read critically, write consciously, speak clearly, tell your truth. And I think that last one is most important. Uh, tell your truth because I think so often young people are stripped of their agency, are stripped of their voice, are told that their opinions don't matter, that they have no valuable perspective. And for me, I very much wanted to debunk that. I very much wanted to say, like, you do have something to say. You are not simply an empty vessel uh, to be filled in this classroom. You are an equal participant in this sort of, like, collective project of trying to understand the world. It's interesting because oftentimes spoken word can be sort of positioned implicitly and tacitly sort of lower on the literary hierarchy than other types of writing and other types of work that are, are, are considered more legitimate, quote unquote. It's really important to trouble that idea and to problematize that and to recognize that this idea of spoken word being lower on the literary hierarchy comes from a, a deep sense of uh, and history of racial and, and class-based pathologies around like what constitutes as legitimate or illegitimate art. And, and Paul Beatty to go from, you know, being a, the Poetry Slam champion at a small cafe in the Lower East Side of Manhattan to being the first American ever to win the Man Booker Prize, I think, demonstrates and illuminates and hopefully disabuses people of the idea that you, you have to, you can only create art in one type of genre or one type of medium and that your work can exist in multiple spaces. And so I hope for, for many people and especially many young artists of color that they, they look at that as an example of what's possible. Uh, the, the book is, is wrestling with that tension and, and thinking through um, what does it mean to, to hold both a profound sense of joy and pride in who you are and where you come from, um, but also recognize that where you come from uh, means that people will, will fear you before they ever know you.